It's time for the wearing of the green and some good eating. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. Today I'm celebrating St. Patty's Day with a menu good enough to trade a leprechaun for his pot of gold. Today on Soflo Taste. to you taste buds and welcome to Soflo Taste here in the Goya kitchen at J World in Coconut Creek. An Erin Go Bra, which means Ireland forever, and that's no blarney. Now, for centuries, the British Isles, therefore Ireland, have never been held very high in the list of creative cuisines, but today I thought it would be fun to disprove that theory somewhat with some of my favorite recipes from Ireland, which are perfect for celebrating St. Patty's Day, March 17th. So let's get to a wee bit of cooking. All right, so I had to make a beef stew. And what's funny about beef stew is, my mother never made me beef stew, but for some reason she had a couple of books on beef stews, and I would go to sleep every night. I'll never forget, I was like between six and eight years old, and I loved the idea of beef stew. And I think more than anything, I liked the pictures of the beef stew and how juicy and shiny everything looked. So we rendered some bacon, and when the bacon got crispy and all the good fat came out of it, we took the bacon out of it, and here it is. And then we started searing some beef for the beef stew. And thanks to Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market, we got some beautiful pieces of stew meat. And the good folks over at Delaware Chicken Farm wanted me to remind you to make sure you order for a St. Patty's Day ahead of time because they have fresh Angus beef brisket, perfect for corned beef and cabbage. Delaware is at 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood. Go to DelawareChicken.com or you can always call them at 954-983-6831. Make sure when you order, you tell them Chef Michelle sent you. All right, so I am almost done. Make sure you sear this little by little. You don't want to crowd your pan because you're never going to get this golden brown color if you throw everything in your pot at one time. It will just cool it down too quickly. Just take your time with it. Beef stew does take, as you know, a good amount of time. I delicately salt and peppered, by the way, the beef before I started searing it. All right, so that comes out. Let's start going in there with the vegetables. So we've got a lot of onions, and you can see they're not so tiny diced as I would normally do. This is gonna be nice and rustic. We've got some carrots peeled and chopped. And you don't want everything so small because you also want everything almost the same size as the meat, maybe a little bit smaller. And we want all of those colors and flavors to be very apparent when we eat the stew. Parsnips, which I adore and I think are just beautiful in this recipe as well. The celery, I do dice a little bit smaller. A lot of people, for some reason, don't love celery as much as I do. And so we like to make it a little less apparent than all the other vegetables. Let's start stirring that around a little bit. And I'm not really looking for color here. I'm just looking to soften everything just a bit and to, right before we add some other ingredients. I'm also scraping up bits of all the goodness that stuck to the pan from the meat and from the bacon. I'm using a cast iron pan here, which I highly recommend, because it really not only um, hold the heat really well, because we're gonna also, you know, you have the option of putting it in the oven or cooking it on the stove. Um, and it really allows everything to caramelize without burning so quickly. Just really good and thick. A lot of the recipes I've found did not have mushrooms, but I think mushrooms are essential for a good stew. So we're gonna add some creminis to this. All right, the next thing we're gonna do before we add anything else is we're gonna make a little bit of a roux so that we have a good base to thicken this stew. So a little bit of flour. Make sure that you cut all your vegetables. You coat them really well with the flour. You want that flour to cook out a little bit. We definitely don't want any raw flour before we add anything else to this stew. And the flour is starting to become nice and golden and that 
lets us know that we can go ahead and start adding other ingredients to it. So I've got very finely minced garlic, which I did not add at the beginning because it would definitely burn because it's, you know, garlic has a lot of natural sugars in it and it's also cut so small that it would easily have over caramelized, which adds a little bitterness, which we don't want. One bay leaf and then finally some tomato paste, which again, we need to really coat all the vegetables in. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna deglaze with a little bit of Guinness. Guinness is a lovely dark Irish beer. Um, it's a stout, so this just adds a lot of richness and almost like a creaminess to the flavor of the stew. What's gonna happen now is this is gonna become really thick and creamy and bubbly and gorgeous, which it already has thanks to high heat. So now I'm gonna add a little herb, which I would love to add a little thyme, and I'm gonna add it whole, but I'm gonna just tie a string around it so that I don't get the little branches of thyme and the leaves will fall out of it, just like so. We're also gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire. Potatoes, which we've kept the peel on. These are just little creamer potatoes. Red Bliss would always be delicious as well. And let's go ahead and add all the meat back into the pot. And make sure you get all those juices that are on the bottom of the pan. And then finally, some beef broth. Now, if you don't want to use beef broth, you can use beef bone broth, chicken stock. It's really up to you. So that's it. I'm gonna cover it. I'm actually going to cook it on the stove. Like I said, we can also put it in the oven. I do have this bacon right here. It's really up to you if you wanna either put it back in or if you wanna serve it next to the stew or just forget about it altogether and make yourself a sandwich later. So come right back and let's see how the stew worked out. Come back to the Goya Kitchen at JA World. Michelle and the food. This is SoFlo Taste. SoFlo Taste, where I'm celebrating St. Patrick's Day, which is observed on the anniversary of the passing of the patron saint of Ireland in the 5th century. The holiday has evolved into a celebration of Irish cultures with parades, special foods, music, dancing, merriment, and a whole lot of green. So let's get back to the food part of the celebration. Our stew is done. So let's take a look. It's beautifully thick and creamy but not too thick so here's the time uh, that I told you about that I wrapped up in the twine let's just make sure we set that aside and don't serve that to anyone and let's serve ourselves a little bit of stew the stew is traditionally served with bread so luckily we're about to work on a recipe for Irish soda bread which we find to be a little bit like a scone um, because it does have some dried fruit and a bit of the same kind of texture as a scone. So here is your lovely beef stew. And I'm just gonna put the bacon on the side because some of us like to eat bacon with our stews and some don't. So let's jump right into soda bread. The first thing we're going to do for the soda bread is of course mix the dry ingredients. Here I've got some all-purpose flour. I'll add in some kosher salt, some sugar, and a little bit of baking soda. And we're just gonna mix that together really well with a fork. You can also use a whisk. And then we're just gonna add in the butter. Here I have small pieces of butter. We're gonna add that to the flour, and honestly, the best way to add that in is with your fingers. Using your fingertips, just push the butter into the flour until you get a texture that's a little more sort of cornmeal-y. All right, once that's pretty well incorporated, go ahead and mix in your favorite raisins. I love golden raisins for this kind of thing, but you can also use the darker raisin or any kind of really dried fruit that you like. I bet cut up prunes would probably be delicious in this too, if you like prunes. We're gonna now mix an egg into 
some buttermilk until well incorporated. Once that's incorporated, go ahead and add that to your flour and butter mixture and go ahead and mix that together. Okay, once you've done everything you can do with a fork, Let's go ahead and put a little bit of bench flour down and push out everything from the bowl onto your table or workbench. Make sure you get every little last bit out of that bowl. Let's bring it together. And it will be a little bit wet, obviously, because of the buttermilk. And that's where the, the flour comes in. Just dust it lightly. You don't want to overdo it because you don't want to dry it out. But you want to bring it together until it forms one nice dough. Now what I love about this is that it's baked traditionally in cast iron. And if you all know anything about me, you know that I love cooking and baking in cast iron, especially this type of cooking. There's something about all those years of seasoning your cast iron pan that make it just perfect and allows things to cook at higher temperatures and also not stick. So this is our beautiful bread. I'm just gonna score it with a sharp knife a nice little X so that it steams. We're gonna place it, now this is a buttered or oiled uh, pan and we have a piece of parchment inside of it and we sprayed that as well. So I'm just gonna place that in and what's great about this recipe is we're not waiting for anything, we don't have to let it rise, it's gonna rise in that oven a little bit. So we're gonna go in the oven Y'all come right back because we have to see how this beautiful Irish soda bread fares and I can't wait to show you something deliciously sweet that I have next. Hi, I'm design expert Elena Capra. Michelle will be right back. And don't forget to stay tuned for another episode of SoFlo Home Project following SoFlo Taste. SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste as we celebrate the food of St. Patrick's Day on March 17th. As I always am, I'm here at the wonderful world of JA here at Coconut Creek, a great place dedicated to our kids. For more information, go to jasouthflorida.org or call 954. 979-7100. Now back to soap low taste. So look how beautiful our scone slash Irish soda bread came out. Let's go ahead and slice it up. Oh, it's so nice and soft. I've actually never tried Irish soda bread before, but it looks so delicate. Now I can see why you eat it with stew. I'm just gonna taste a little piece. Mmm. It's like a scone. Is it a scone? I think this is a scone. This is good. Okay. So, I can see eating this with stew. I'm gonna put that here. So you two can meet each other. Now I bet you could probably do it without the dried fruit and make it even more savory. In my mind, I'm thinking maybe little dried tomatoes would be yummy in there. My mind's going crazy. Maybe that's not very Irish. Anyway, that was delicious. Let's move on to our last dish, our last recipe celebrating St. Patty's. I really love the combination of Guinness beer with chocolate. The two really go beautifully together, especially because Guinness is so dark and rich and chocolate basically is the same thing and they both have kind of a, a roastiness about them. So. We're gonna make Guinness chocolate cupcakes. So for the cake part of it, the cupcake part of it, let's combine all the dry ingredients. We've got 
all-purpose flour with cocoa, a little bit of um, ground espresso, instant coffee, which makes it really roasty and delicious, a little bit of baking soda, and a little bit of kosher salt. So just so you know, we took a bottle of Guinness and reduced it by about two thirds. Half a cup we're gonna use for the cupcake, and the rest of it we're actually gonna use for the cream, the buttercream. So to make that, you take a little bit of coffee granules for the cream as well, and you mix it with that reduced Guinness. It was still a little warm, so I'm gonna combine them and just let them come to temperature over there. Let's do all the wet stuff. We've got brown sugar with a little bit of vegetable oil. Make sure you don't use anything with any flavor to it, so no olive oils or anything like that. Let's go ahead and start mixing this up. We're gonna add two eggs, a little vanilla, and before we add the sour cream, we're just gonna make sure that that is really well combined. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add the sour cream, which, as you know, adds a beautiful moist texture and creaminess to any cake or cupcake that you make. Let's let that be really just homogeneous. Aha, uh -huh. all right. Get rid of the whisk. Let's go ahead and put the wet into the dry. Try to get every last bit of it. You know, when baking, it's so important to painstakingly get every last bit of your moist and your dry ingredients. It just is the difference between a good bake and a perfect bake. All right, let's combine those two together. And you don't want to over mix this because you'll feel it when you try your cupcake. Let's just be gentle. Combine the wet into the dry. And then finally, we're gonna add that reduced Guinness that I told you about. And that is gonna make the cupcake really kind of um, rich and roasty. And yes, it's fine to give the kids because the alcohol burns out. It's actually already burned out when we reduced it. All right, so this is combined into a nice wet batter, and those will be baked. All right, next for the frosting, we've already taken some butter, some room temperature butter, and started making it nice and creamy with our mixer. The next thing I'll do is add powdered sugar to it. Yes, it's quite a bit, but if you've ever made frosting, you know that it is just a ton of powdered sugar and then something creamy like butter or cream cheese. I'm gonna add the Guinness to that, as well as some cocoa powder. All right, I'm gonna keep mixing this until, until it turns into a beautiful creamy frosting. Come right back and let's make some cupcakes together. Welcome back to the SoFlo Taste and our St. Patty Show. So our cupcakes bake beautifully. They're incredibly moist. And of course, we've got the Guinness frosting. So we're just gonna pipe our cupcakes. And this recipe is not just an adult version like I had mentioned. The kids can have it too. All of the alcohol has burned out of, of course, the Guinness beer. And we have some crispy little chocolate yummies 
which you can of course garnish with anything if you want. You can shave some chocolate or nothing at all. You know, these should be green, but anyway, thanks Taste Buds for watching today. The U.S. has made the celebration of St. Patrick's Day a big deal. Even the pandemic doesn't seem to be able to hold it down. I hope these recipes will continue to give you a little tasty piece of the Emerald Isle. If St. Patrick's is coming, so too is spring, and with it, the harvest of spring. Next week, that's what I'll be cooking with, the harvest of spring. So join me as I share my kitchen with Mother Nature and her spring-inspired foods on SoFlo Taste. Now let's say top of the morning to design expert Elena Capra, host of SoFlo Home Project. Good morning, Elena. What's up next on SoFlo Home Project? Hi, Michelle. Good morning. So today we take a look at ways to expand the square footage of the outdoor area of your home by adding an addition. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we have expert advice on how to seamlessly connect a new addition to an existing property. Thanks, Elena. Happy St. Patty's Day to you. I'm sure Elena will wear the perfect green to celebrate. So my taste buds, please be smart, be safe, and be vaccinated. And stay where you are for SoFlo Home Project with Elena. I'll see you next week. Goodbye and very good taste.